Everyone knows that the Amazing Digital Circus has had a few big problems in the fandom since its inception. From sexual content plaguing YouTube, to fake merch, content farms, scams, ships, and so much more. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So strap in because I got some wild stuff to show you. The first thing that I'm going to be talking about in this video is the uprising of inappropriate, sexual, and downright disgusting content that people are making on YouTube about the Amazing Digital Circus. If you've been around the Amazing Digital Circus fandom for any period of time, you would know that some people in this community are downright freaky. This goes to show though, but why exactly does this content get made? If you do any amount of lurking, you'll see it for sure. What I'm talking about is sexual images or videos of the characters from the Amazing Digital Circus. These images or videos usually contain two or more characters doing things that, let's just say, are not family friendly. And we all know that the Amazing Digital Circus is supposed to be for kids, which makes this even more messed up. And it's not even their fault for finding it really, because just one quick search of the Amazing Digital Circus on YouTube and you'll see a bunch of really weird searches pop up. It's quite odd that someone would want to make this art in the first place, but what's even more strange to me is that people are actually consuming and enjoying this stuff as well. And while this might not be that big of a deal, we have to put ourselves in the mind of the show's creators. Imagine how you would feel if a show and characters you worked so hard to create, design, animate, write, etc. were made into a gross inappropriate piece of art uploaded to the internet for anyone to access. I can't imagine that any of the show's creators are okay with this. In fact, Gooseworks revealed during a Q&A on Tumblr that they talked to Glitch Productions, the show publisher, about copyright striking and removing this content featuring their IP and characters, as they have the legal right to do so as far as I know. But I am not a lawyer, so take that with a grain of salt. Ships aren't as bad on the other hand, but can get freaky as well. A ship is when someone basically makes up a relationship between two characters that isn't necessarily canon or true to the show, but they have it in their head that it is true even though it's not. There was even a joke in the newest trailer for the Amazing Digital Circus episode 2, when Kane and Palmney are talking outside of the circus, and Kane is confronted by the sun about not having any dialogue. Threats on Kane's life are made until Kane reveals that there will be dialogue not just for the sun, but also eight new characters, which we are shown the designs for right here. Hi Kane! I'm gonna kill you! Uh, what? Why? I read all the scripts and saw I don't get a single line of dialogue while the moon gets two! I mean, I guess we could give you some more lines. Okay, never mind! I don't want to kill you anymore! Speaking of dialogue, there will be all sorts of new dialogue from many of our new colorful characters! <laughs> With this many new characters, imagine all the violent shipping wars that we'll be completely powerless to do anything about! So as you can see, there's a more lighthearted stance on shipping since it is not necessarily harmful to the show's image, just someone having fun. What really is harmful though is the sexual content. I've already told you about Gooseworks' effort to get this content shut down, and it's pretty much for two good reasons. The first being is that it somewhat puts a preservation on new people's view of the show and may affect how they view it. Like when someone thinks of Pomni, they might not think about Pomni from the show, but they might think of some dirty comic in the dark side of the internet, which is not necessarily a great stigma to have about your show. The other reason is due to content farms and children's YouTubers using these sexual images to promote in their video for children. Typically, this comes in forms of images of characters doing sexually explicit poses and positions. This may be bad on its own, but once you consider that these videos are marketed towards children, it makes me sick to my stomach thinking about it in the first place. Children are impressionable, and exposing them to this Elsagate style of content cannot be good for them in the long run. But these channels don't care because they rake in a massive amount of money. Honestly, I'm shocked at how stuff like this is even legal, considering it's promoting sexual content to underage children. Children. Some YouTubers get in trouble for posting thirst trap videos when they have a large fan base of minors. Why isn't this being talked about? I wish that someone at YouTube would remove their head from their rear end and actually fix this problem on the platform, because currently the moderation is piss poor and honestly almost non-existent. Next, I wanted to talk about the fake merch that continues to be sold illegally online, featuring designs of characters from the Amazing Digital Circus for profit that the original characters won't see a dime from. Gooseworks actually made a joke about this in the episode 2 trailer, which I told you about earlier. As you've just just seen, Kane and Palmney were discussing how funds will be raised for the show. Before we see Kane transform into this disgusting abomination of a bootleg plush, Palmney looks at him confused before he turns back to normal and makes a remark about having quote unquote fainted. Well, if you didn't know, what Kane was transformed into was one of the many illegal bootleg plushies that are being sold. Well, some people may think it's alright since there weren't any official plushies of Kane available even before now, it's still pretty illegal though because they are still profiting off someone else's creation without their permission. It's also pretty easy to tell that it's a low quality product. With the website this plush is being sold from called digitalcircusplush.com, some people may think that it's an official product, and once they realize that it's completely lackluster in quality, they won't ever want to buy another Digital Circus piece of merch ever again. 
even if it's real. Because a lot of people don't do a lot of checking before they buy something to see if it's official or genuine. Either way, I think it's pretty hilarious that Glitch is throwing punches at these illegal sellers. There's official Kane plushies and plushies for Jackson Palmney now, though. So if you want a Digital Circus plush, please get the original and not the bootleg. Finally, I want to cover more on the content farms, and I'm gonna give it to you straight, it's bad out here. Ever since the Amazing Digital Circus first dropped, people have been frothing from the mouth to get video after video of the Amazing Digital Circus out, and my god, it doesn't stop. In case you didn't know, a content farm is basically a YouTube channel that constantly pumps out videos taking advantage of freelance writers, editors, and more, and makes as many videos as possible while maxing out the discoverability and search engine optimization, or SEO for short. While these channels may seem alright, it's not cool that they don't show any real passion for the Amazing Digital Circus, and instead only for money, which has been a big problem on YouTube lately. No one does it for the fun anymore. There's even theory channels out there that don't really even have quality theories. Some quote-unquote theorists will just say whatever comes to their mind and barely prove a point or elaborate on what they are talking about, and just make a half-baked theory. Some of these videos could even possibly be good, but because of their swift uploading schedule, there's no real time for quality, just quantity. And there's even a lot of channels that literally just use AI for their entire production. And well, yes, I will admit, I do have scriptwriters and I do have editors for this channel. We still put tons of time into these videos to make sure that the information we talk about is actually accurate and we get the best videos out for you guys every week. So if you want the most accurate theories, make sure to watch more of my videos. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Well, not necessarily a theorist channel, one channel I would like to discuss a lot is LankyBox, and I swear to god, these guys have editors locked in their basement. They post like five videos a day on many different channels, and so many of them are about the amazing digital circus as well. It's quite disheartening to see a series that so many enjoy be tainted by these bright hair colored goofballs. Half of these videos make me feel like I'm having a seizure with how damn bright they are. I really don't have an understanding for how kids watch this. Their bright and colorful thumbnails with exciting visuals promise a stimulating experience which younger kids are drawn to almost immediately, but this is made even worse by the uploads of some of the worst franchise milking I have ever seen. I genuinely pray for any kid whose attention span is destroyed by these YouTubers. Gooseworks even said when asked what their villain origin story is that it is Lanky Box, and they are obviously a problem. It's so sad to see content creation become more about money than passion, and I really hope that this platform can one day go back to its roots. Because YouTube now seems really corporate, and channels are just optimized to make the most money they physically can, with little passion for anything. Hopefully, one day we will see a change, but until then, let's pray for Lanky Box's editors and go on with our day. And if you want to watch more videos about the amazing digital circus, you should click on this video right here. I hope you guys in- uh, did you, uh, whatever. Yeah. I just had a stroke. Yeah.